Well, it's an unfortunate affair. It's an unfortunate affair, and what I will say about this is that, uh, first of all, it's important to be fair. The, the people who made those decisions believed genuinely that they were acting in the best interest uh, of the bank. Okay? Now, the action taken was inappropriate and disproportionate. Okay? So um, we need to... Uh, we've been investing for quite a few years now in improving all the risks and controls in the, in the bank. And I should say, I'll take the opportunity, I've been quite quiet on all this since the beginning. Indeed. I did not order a surveillance of Iqbal Khan. And the notion which has been repeated that for an incident in January, suddenly I got angry in September and lashed out, is just not credible and is not true. So I did not order surveillance of Iqbal Khan. There was concern about his departure. I was involved in putting in place retention measures. I spent a lot of time with the people who were at risk and who are still in the bank, actually. But that decision was not made by me. That's a fact. So you can confirm that you had absolutely no knowledge that I, the I CEO, who has now publicly taken responsibility for this, yes. had taken unilateral decision to that effect, but you had no idea absolutely. that it was going on? Absolutely. But I will maintain that everything we've seen since then means that he thought he was acting in the best interest of the bank. And part of the issue is we don't have a policy to do those types of things because we don't customarily do those types of things. And this is a point I struggle to see why it's so difficult to understand. But it was a, it was a unique case when uh, when uh, investigation went, they realized it, it had never happened. It was a unique case. So there were no procedures or policies established to handle it. I understand. There's also a question of governance here as well, because you're a man who has razor sharp focus on the performance of all of the individual units of the bank. Uh, you know, you're a detailed oriented person. How is it possible that the COO, a man that you've worked with for a very long time, not just at Credit Suisse but at other institutions as well, was able to make a unilateral decision yeah. of this proportion without you yeah. being aware? Have people considered that maybe he thought he wasn't doing a bad thing? Why do you feel the need to escalate? Nobody has given any consideration well, there's no to one, that. There's no, no one out there who thinks that no, it was a but, good but, thing. But, and actually, unfortunately, I, it's led to the suicide I, of one of your contractors. But, but, and the suicide is a, is a horrible thing, absolutely a horrible thing. And if you allow me, uh, I will say that we, really I and everybody at Credit Suisse absolutely regret uh, that it's a sad. And I think that's really what led to the resignation of the individuals, because that was a terrible, a terrible consequence. But you will allow me, if we have time, to do... One thing, because I, uh, I think I owe it to the family. The family of that person made a statement. We do not know with absolute certainty what led him to believe he had no option than to take his own life. There are no guilty parties. He was an honest individual with a sense of integrity. And he's being mourned by those uh, who loved him. We therefore ask that our privacy be respected at this difficult time. That's a statement from family which I gave to the Swiss press, and that's what I would like to respect. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.